what we're doing today is introducing you to the techniques and how to's on pistol peats. I want to show you guys how to actually use them correctly and give you different pointers and different ways to actually set these up and use them particularly today is going to be in lakes. Uh, you can use these in streams but particularly in lakes we're going to talk about. One of the misconceptions about pistol peats is most people think they're spinners and use them as a spinner behind a bubble and that's not necessarily the case. Uh, they're more of a hybrid type fly and you really want to work it that way. So we're going to show you different ways to do that today. How to rig, how to fish it, and show you some footage as far as on how to do that. Alright, what we're going to do now is actually show you the setup on a pistol peat with a spinning rod setup. Uh, what we're going to do is actually I've got myself here a six pack with the bubbles which gives you pretty much everything you need to start out with and we'll show you the other key things that you need when you actually rig your, your spinning rod. Uh, first thing is here is actually with this setup is actually you can actually have the bubbles already in the package. Right? So we can actually just get one of the bubbles out and what these do is give you castability with your spinning rod setup. So the bubble itself opens up, you can fill it halfway with water, close it up, it keeps the actual bubble uh, with some weight to it to give you some castability and actually gives it the buoyancy to float as far as on the water and so you can actually use your pistol peat trailing behind it and we'll show you how to actually set up that next. Alright, here are the key things that you need to actually set up your actual pistol peat with the spinning rods. Is your bubble that you have right here. This one I've got set up with uh, about halfway filled with water so that gives you the weight to actually cast. Uh, the other thing is that I use a lot is an actual barrel swivel uh, anywhere from a size 7 or seven, uh, size seven or a size 5. Uh, what you want is the barrel itself right here on the back end of the bubble and on the bubbles you got your small end and your large end. The large end is going to be going toward your uh, toward the actual fly itself. Small end is going to be the more aerodynamic side going toward the tip of your, of your rod, your spinning rod. But you want to make sure you have a barrel swivel or a snap swivel if you prefer to use that as long as it doesn't go into the back end of the bubble. And that's really a key. You don't want to get it stuck in there. So size 5, size 7 typically works. Uh, of course you've got your pistol peat right here and we'll tie that on in a second. And the next thing I recommend would be off your main line is using the leader line preferably fluorocarbon. doesn't necessarily have to be but it's something I've found that works so much better is using a fluorocarbon. Uh, it's just tougher for the fish to see it in especially in clear water. They, they, you got a little gleam that comes off the actual monofilament that they sometimes can pick up. So whenever you're having just strictly just followers and you can see the fish following it all the way to shore and not hitting it, might be a good idea to switch to fluorocarbon if that's one of the issues you're having. Alright, here's the first step. You got your main line going to your rod you feed it through the smaller end of your bubble, just feed it right through. So you've got it sitting right there, it runs up and down and this gives it the chance actually where the fish won't really feel it, it runs freely on the line and really gives you an opportunity to get those light strikes and be able to hit them. The fish pulls on the back end and won't feel the bubble. Uh, so you've got your bubble sitting there, then you tie on your barrel swivel onto this end. What I typically like to do as far as on mine is using an improved cinch knot is typically what I tie more than anything else on this setup. So it would be twisting around a few times. I'm sure a lot of you have seen actually different videos how to tie knots. So it's just a basic improved cinch. Take it through on your main line. And right now I'm using 8 pound monofilament as far as my main line. Take it through, tie it down, and then I'll clip the actual uh, tag line off in a second. So that's the first part of the setup. Alright, next part is going to be your leader line. Right here I've got six pound fluorocarbon. Today we're fishing in a lake that has some 18 to 20 inch fish. So we want to get something a little heavier. So we're going six pound fluorocarbon. So what I typically do is on my end just go full arm's length. So you want about a six foot leader. So I'll go full six foot leader. And cut that off. Then you tie that to your barrel swivel on the back end. And same situation on this one, improved cinch, and that's what I typically do on this end. Alright, here we go on the setup. We'll start from back end to front as far as all the way through. So I've got my pistol peat tied onto my leader line, improved cinch knot, same way here. So it's set up and ready to go. Here we go all the way through to about a five foot leader, and that was the 
fluorocarbon that we have there, that six pound fluoro, tied with an improved cinch to a barrel. Barrel swivel here, tied to my main line. Off my main line is my bubble, which you can see floats freely back and forth and gives you, like I said, a great opportunity for a light striking fish that can't even feel it. Because they'll feel the main line and you'll feel it directly to your rod tip before they actually feel the bubble. And here it is as far as to the front end of the rod and all the way through and just your spinning rod setup. So there's your basic setup to go fishing with a pistol peat in a lake and it works great.